From the shores of the Olentangy in Ohio to Boilermaker Country, the Wabash in Indiana, the seventh ranked Ohio State Buckeyes pay a visit to the Purdue Boilermakers. At the crossroads of a season, one looks to roll on, the other to get back on track. The seventh ranked Ohio State Buckeyes pay a visit to the Purdue Boilermakers. Hi, everybody. I'm Wayne Larrabee along with Chris Martin. Ohio State, seventh ranked in the country. Very impressive, having won four in a row. And, Chris, they're doing it with a very impressive defense. Well, it's a defense that holds opponents' heads underwater and doesn't allow them to come up for air. Absolutely suffocating at every layer. They get to the football, athletic up front. It's a defense that's only allowed two touchdowns in the last four games, but yet they went pick six twice last week. Very opportunistic. And the offense triggered by Terrell Pryor. And Pryor's got to do it in the pass game. You know he's an adept runner. He's looking to escape and get outside. But can he throw the ball consistently down the field? That's the And big they question. can beat you on special teams. Yeah, you got to love this kid, Ray Small. Explosive in the special teams game. We know that Purdue was porous a week ago. They got to tighten up. Purdue comes in here with a 1-5 and five record, but their quarterback, Joey Elliott, in his first year as a starter, leads the Big Ten in passing yards per game. He's a proficient passer. He wants to throw the ball down the field. He's still getting into rhythm with his inexperienced wide receivers. Valentine has to step up to the plate, have a big day, as does Smith and Carlos. He and that offense has to have career days in order for Purdue to win. Partly sunny. Temperature crisp and cool in the upper 40s. It may stretch out to the uh, lower 50s before this day is done. And it is uh, Big Ten country and Big Ten weather. Joining us, the third member of our troop here today, Rebecca Harlow. Rebecca, Purdue comes in at 1-5, and five, but sometimes records can be deceiving. Yes, that's right, Wayne. A lot of people would look at this matchup and say Ohio State wins big, end of story. But if you take a closer look at the record, you'll see that that's absolutely not the case. Aside from Purdue's game last weekend, they have lost all their games by less than a touchdown, only 18 points total. Plus, this is an offense that's averaging four 410 yards per game. In fact, Tressel's been talking to his guys all week, showing them film and saying, hey guys, look, this is a team that is just a few turnovers from a very different season, Wayne. Thank you, Rebecca. And the head coach of the Ohio State Buckeyes, Jim Tressel, in his ninth season. What a uh, campaign he's had. Seven bold appearances, five BCS games, a national championship. And for the Purdue Boilermakers, succeeding Joe Tiller, a former Tiller assistant, Danny Hope, in his first season, he was on the staff last season handling the offensive line. And Wayne, if you're Purdue and Danny Hope, who you've known you've lost a couple of close matches, as Rebecca alluded to, what a perfect platform to come out and validate to the outside world exactly what you are. They have a great matchup and a chance to prove that message of Danny Hope. Ohio State will receive to start the ball game here this afternoon. Light winds blowing uh, out of the north, keeping it somewhat cool here. Temperatures were in the 30s in these parts last night. Seems to have warmed up. Yeah, it's warmed up a little bit. <laughs> it's, it's not Florida warm, no. but it's warming up. Back deep to receive for the Ohio State Buckeyes. That's Lamar Thomas. And here's the kickoff by Carson Wiggs. It is Thomas from the 10. Stacked up short of the 25-yard line. Macy makes the tackle, and it's a first and 10. Chris, keys to this ball game. Well, looking at Ohio State first, they got to go insane. And that by that, I mean hand the ball off to their talented running back. And then prior, when he gets a chance to throw it, he's got to do it fluidly, defensively, like they did a week ago. Be offensive. If you're Purdue, don't put the ball on the carpet. You have to win the turnover battle. That's absolutely critical. Elliott and his wide receivers have to step up. Prior, the sophomore, Jeanette Pennsylvania, had an outstanding freshman year, has struggled a little bit in the passing game this season. But he's got new offensive linemen and new skill position people with him this year. Prior running option. And down he goes. Kerrigan and Gerald Gooden collaborate on the tackle. 
And we take a look at the road. Tell Belvita starting lineup because you can't start your game day without their famous queso dip. For the Buckeyes, backs and receivers, Brandon Sane's going to carry the mail offensively with Boom Heron down due to injury. On the offensive line, they're young. Michael Brewster in the middle leads the way. Breyer faked the handoff, fumbles the football. Boilermakers have it. Or do they? Yes, they do. Purdue football, it looked like Kerrigan got in there and tomahawked the ball away from Pryor, and the Boilermakers come away with it. If you want to be a star, be a star in a big game. Kerrigan has flashed all season. He just blows by the tight end, gets to the quarterback Pryor, but also has the wherewithal to strip the ball out. This is a conscious thought. Look at him working, getting the ball out of there, putting his team down in a very winnable situation. Great start for Purdue's defense. Mike Neal made the fumble recovery. First and 10 at the 20-yard line of Ohio State for the Boilermakers. It's usually Purdue that gives up the football deep in its own territory, not the Buckeyes. Purdue a fast-starting team. And let's see if they can get that going here. And they reverse it. Looking to throw into the end zone for Valentine, incomplete. I'll tell you what, that was a well-executed play, Keith Smith. A very well-executed play indeed, but also a very well-covered play by Chimdi Chekwa. You got to come out with trickery early. Hope knows that. But watch Chekwa right there. He doesn't go for all the action up front. He is a pass defender first, a relying on his assignment and playing that well. Pretty good pass by Keith Smith. It Not was. Bad. Valentine did everything he could to go up and get that ball, too. Second and ten. They bunch three receivers at the bottom of your screen. Quarterback draw. Not getting much. Honda Generators red zone. And the numbers for Purdue been pretty good. 13 touchdowns and 16 trips. They know how to finish drives. And in a game of this magnitude, you have to finish it with end zone points, not field goal points. There's a look at Joey Elliott. 12 touchdowns, but nine interceptions. Purdue, one of the, the most turnover prone team in the Big Ten. This is third down. Not enough for the first down, as Ralph Bolden got the swing pass, but he does get his kicker a little bit closer. Down to the 15 yard line. So a gain of five. And Carson Wiggs comes on for a field goal try, which for him should be pretty much a chip shot. Well, that was an interesting play, Wayne, because that's the actual play that they wanted to run on second down, but it was a busted assignment. Came back just to set up their field goal kicker. But in a game like this, you got to score touchdowns, not field goals. Carson Wiggs has hit a season long of 59. This from 32 is through the uprights. So the Purdue Boilermakers take advantage, but only for three of their turnover forced in the red zone. Welcome back to West Lafayette. Along with Chris Martin and Rebecca Harlow, I'm Wayne Larrabee. Beautiful day for Big Ten football. Partly cloudy skies and crisp, cool temperatures. There's Terrell Pryor. We'll get a second look at him. First drive didn't end so well for him, a fumble. Purdue, take a look at this. In seven games, you talk about a fast starting team, Chris. In all of their games, they've held a lead early on, and they've got the lead here. All right. But a great start for that defense, though, because you were anxious to see them set the temperament, and it started with Ryan Kerrigan. Carson Wiggs ready to kick it away. They keep it away from Ray Small. Here comes Lamar Thomas from the five to the 20 to the 25 right sidelines and Wiggs angles him out of bounds in front of the Ohio State bench across the 35 yard line 32 yard return. Well the Purdue defense wasn't on the field long enough for us to give you the lineup so Rotel Velveeta here we go. I like Mike Neal a big strong guy up front strongest member of this defensive unit Ryan Kerrigan very active on the outside. The linebacking core has been very good Jason Werner finally getting to play as a fifth year senior he's been hobbled by injuries throughout his career but he's a good one. Brandon King David Pender very good on the corners and the safeties you were really impressed with what you saw in pregame. Pass the eyeball test. Brandon Sane nice hole. 
to the 40 45. Williams brings him down across the 50 in Purdue territory near the 46 a 20 yard gain. This is just a little inside handoff. You're going to see Sane. He's going to take it and cut it up the middle. Well designed. Good blocking up front. That's where you got to get off blocks if you're Purdue. The first guy hitting you is a safety. That's not a good sign. Linebackers know where to be found. Here's a look at Brandon Sane's work. Averaging five yards a pop. First down. That's Sane alongside of Pryor. And Pryor looks to the air. Behind good protection, Sane the outlet. And he makes the first man beat down the sideline to the 25 20 to the 15 spinning to the 10. It's first and goal Ohio State at the six yard line of Purdue. Torrey Williams makes a touchdown saving tackle back to back plays to Brandon Sane for 20 and now 40 yards. And Wayne this is an easy play play to make by Werner but if he stops Sane right there it's a six yard gain you have to get him on the ground it's an open field tackle I know it's challenging but you have to minimize the damage. First and goal to go six yard line of Purdue for Ohio State. Pryor fakes to Sane. Trying to beat his man around the corner, and he does. Got by Jason Werner for the score. Terrell Pryor on a six-yard touchdown run. With Terrell Pryor, you have to understand this simple fact. He is always looking to get the ball outside on the perimeter when he runs it. So you have to keep him boxed in. Werner can't let him get the edge there. Put a fence around him, force him back inside to where the rest of the defense is. He is the second leading rusher for Ohio State. That was his ninth rushing touchdown of the season. Point after by Aaron Petrie. So the Buckeyes, after an early miscue, roar right back and take the lead on this fake and run by Terrell Pryor, 7 3 Ohio State. Welcome back to West Lafayette. Let's take a look at that uh, touchdown run by Terrell Pryor. Wayne, when you play against Pryor, you know that he's looking to get outside. So you want to build a fence right here. Keep him inside. Don't let him get outside on the edge. And then you see it again. He gets outflanked. That's what Pryor's looking to do. He does a nice job of holding the linebackers with that faith. Jason Taylor muffs it. He's to the 10, to the 15 and fights his way close to the 20-yard line and did well to get there. First and 10 for the Boilermakers, just short of their 20-yard line. Elliott, quick release. This is Valentine. Valentine stacked up while they're trying to grab the ball away from him, but he was able to get it across the 30 to the 33-yard line and a first down. We'll tell Velveeta starting lineup because you can't start your game day without their famous queso dip. Ralph Bolden is the runner that we'll look at here today. The receivers relatively inexperienced. A couple of junior college kids will play in that receiving core. Jared is willing leads a big offensive line. Let's see if the Boilermakers can take advantage. Bolden not going to get much here. First quarter winding to a close. Ohio State capitalized on a Purdue turnover for seven. Purdue prior to that had capitalized on an Ohio State turnover for just three. That's the difference in the ball game right now. So one quarter complete in the books. They're trying to boil her up against the Buckeyes in West Lafayette. Along with Chris Martin and Rebecca Harlow, I'm Wayne Larrabee, West Lafayette, Ross Aid Stadium. Purdue on a second down and eight. The fake to Bolden. Smith's got it. Fumbled it on the hit out of bounds, and they're ruling incomplete. This team has a tough time hanging on to the football, don't they? Yeah, My it, goodness. It's almost like it's a hot potato. Jermail Hines broke that play up. But they can't get it out of their hands fast enough. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, you hate to say it, but it's like an epidemic on this team. We're going to go back to that uh, turnover that wasn't a few moments ago. Third down and eight for Purdue. For two of four on third down conversions. Bolden in motion. Three man rush Ohio State. 
Elliott to Smith. Cuts it back. Spinning his way. Got the first down. Just short of the 30-yard line. Torrance made the tackle. A couple of plays ago. This is on a third down play. Watch this on the receiver. The catch made by Carlos, he stacked up. There's no whistle. No whistle, and the receiver's feet are still in move. So Purdue, in my mind, they dodged a big bullet. Got lucky there. It's up to them now to take advantage of it, and they've got a first down just short of their 30-yard line. Joey Elliott is showing extreme patience and understanding of the offense in the pocket. He's letting those routes develop. Elliott, Bolden. Holman was there, and if Holman didn't get him, Nathan Williams would have. Rebecca Harlow joins us with a special guest on the sidelines. Rebecca? That's right. I've got a, a one face here, Curtis Banner, who a lot of people recognize. Of course, he's playing on Sundays now. It's got to be tough for you to be back and not out there playing. It is. It is. You know, it's always a, a great time playing here. Uh, but, it, but it's nice to watch a little bit every now and then, and, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll get on board this game. Joey Elliott's a good friend of yours. What have you been telling him, encouraging him here as he's going through this season? Well, you know, it's obviously a tough start you know, with, with a few losses there. We've been in, been in some close games that I really think, uh, you know, could have had if a few things go the other way. So I think just the best thing is just to stay positive. I think people have really done that on the team and from what I hear. So, you know, that's I think that's the best thing looking at it. Thanks, Curtis. Good luck with the Colts. Thank you very much. Guys. Thank you, Rebecca. Brian Roll, despite his best efforts, the quarterback Joey Elliott showed good heart in making that completion out to Keith Smith, and now it's third down and about three for Purdue. He showed heart, toughness, and moxie mm -hmm. to stand in the pocket. He had Brian Roll boring in on him, full-grown middle linebacker. <laughs> Running downhill, partner. <laughs> third down, a little bit more than three. Elliott. Ooh, nice throw back between defenders for a first down. Smith, his favorite receiver, Brian Roll, makes the tackle up near the 43-yard line. First and 10, gain of six. And this is why Elliott leads the Big Ten in passing yards. His ability to extend the play. Watch him just slide outside. He's going to go there, slide a little bit right, let this route unfold, and boom, stick it in the window. Good job by Joey Elliott. And it was a fairly tight window. Tenth play of this drive. Purdue first down from the Boilermaker 42. Straight eye formation. Halliburton the fullback. Bolden running to daylight. To the 48 yard line. A gain of six yards. You love to see when back sort of press the line, but the, and when they have patience and vision to find the hole. Bolden rushed for 357 yards the first two games of the season against Toledo and Oregon. He's gained 242 yards in the subsequent games coming into today. In this game, seven carries, 23 yards. Yards hard to come by on the ground against these Buckeyes. Second down, Halliburton the fullback. <laughs> Sir. Reward the big fella. He plows forward across the 50 into Ohio State territory to the 45-yard line. Ohio State defense has a great luxury of being able to make plays without utilizing blitz packages. But I think in this game, because they're giving some time to Elliott and creating some fresh creases, they're going to have to bring the heat here pretty soon. First and ten. Purdue Wayne loves this bunch formation down the bottom. Elliott with Bolden to his right. And out of that bunch, they find an open receiver. Wayne L. Graves Sandy for a first down inside the 35-yard line of Ohio State. 11-yard gain, and Chris, you get the idea of this drive here. You know, Purdue came in, their opponents had run 50 more plays than they had this season, but the Boilermakers have dominated in terms of number of plays in this first half against Ohio State. And it's a lot of window dressing, because they run the same formations, but their receivers run all over the place. But on the bottom line is you always get somebody on an inside route and somebody on an outside route. You see it again, bunch up top. First and 10 to Bolden. 
nothing there as the defensive end Thaddeus Gibson came in from behind. Today's Auto Owners Insurance game leaders. Terrell Fryer, 89 yards through the air. Brandon Sane, how about the job he's done in this first half so far? And Joey Elliott managing the game. Here's a look at it. Coming into this ball game in six games, their opponents had run 50 more plays than had the Boilermakers this season. Smith in motion. Elliott. Incomplete. Take your pick. Ohio State, Iowa, Penn State. Top defenses in this conference. Third down for the Purdue Boilermakers. They are two for two on third down conversions on this drive. Third and long. Elliott now being pressured by Holman. Nearly threw an interception. Brian Roll could not hang on. Elliott trying to thread the needle to Keith Carlos in its fourth down. You don't want to try and thread too many needles against Ohio State's defense. It's the most opportunistic defense in the Big Ten coming into this game. Ten interceptions. When you try to force footballs against them, they typically make you pay. They bring the punting unit on, looking for field position. Chris Summers plays six inside the 20 coming into this ball game. Fourth down. Hangs this one high. Fair catch signal is made. It's muffed. It is muffed. And it appears Purdue has it. And they do. Small, the fair catch signal, given plenty of room, it goes right through his hands. And you wonder if there's been a little piercing of sharp sunlight coming in. He's looking right up at it. I wonder if it distracted him. The costly mistake there by Small. No question about it. Adam Wolf, the backup wide receiver, gathered it in. So the Boilermakers continue on this drive. Bolden in motion. They empty the shotgun. Elliott on a called run. And he gets a couple of yards down to the 10, gain of three. This is Purdue's opportunity yeah. right here. You're not going to get too many against Ohio State. You must take advantage. This is kind of too where that offense has always been looking for a go-to guy. Two turnovers by Purdue. Honda Generators red zone today. The Boilermakers settled for a field goal on their previous trip into the red zone. That also the result of a Purdue turnover. Second down. Elliott drills the middle off the hands of Keith Smith incomplete. He was disengaging from linebacker coverage. Inside the five yard line and a lot of heat on that ball from Joey Elliott. Yeah, this was a good job of collisioning the wide receiver by the linebacker. All of a sudden it disrupts his route. That ball did have a little mustard on it. Beg your pardon. It wasn't uh, Holman. He came over late. It was Brian Roll that the receiver was disengaging from. Now it's third down. And when you did when you provide a collision on the wide receiver it just throws off that timing pattern just enough that it causes an incompletion. So third down and seven from the 10 yard line of the Buckeyes. Elliott to the end zone overshot Keith Smith who was open. Elliott threw it to the inside shoulder. Smith appeared to be looking to the outside. Well, and Elliott was staring down the barrel. Watch this heat Coleman again. We know what a big playmaker he is. Forcing the action. Elliott had to get rid of it a little quicker than he wanted. Hence the errant throw. Carson Wiggs will try for the third time to put three points on the board. Made his first, missed his second from 52. And this will be a 27 yard field goal. And Wiggs has it through the uprights. It is good. So the Ohio State margin is cut to the slimmest of margins. Seven to six Buckeyes first half.
The Ohio State lead sliced to one on Carson Wiggs field goal. <laughs> Wayne, you missed <laughs> Lamar Thomas across the 30 and he absorbs a hit. Down he goes near the 33 yard line. Combination of Dwayne Beckford in on that tackle along with uh, Dan Dirking. First and 10 Buckeyes. 33 yard line Purdue Ohio State Territory. Purdue showing blitz now. Sane runs to daylight. He wanted to go up the middle, but Sane cut it to the left to the outside and then cut it back across the 40 to the 41. Joe Holland makes the tackle eight yards downfield. Well, that's what we call a, a run blitz. That time Purdue shooting the gaps with Werner. Sane does a nice job of picking his spot and finding his hole. And as Howard Griffith liked to say, running to daylight. Second down and two. Howard used to do a lot of that at Illinois. He sure did. Sane once again breaks the tackle. He's into Purdue territory. First to Sane was Quan short. He could not bring him down. And Sane picks up 10 yards to the 49 yard line of the Boilermakers as a result. This is what Ohio State wants to do. They want to get Sane revved up, get him running between the tackles, going outside. They have road graders up front. This Purdue line's pretty stout, though. But I can tell you, Sane, he's, he's going to run through arm tackles. So you have to stop his progress and wrap up his legs. 7-6 Ohio State, 5.41 to go, second quarter. Brandon Sane, and they stack him up as he tried to get around the left end. Werner. And Kerrigan collaborate on the stop for the Boilermakers. Loss of one. I like the way Purdue is flowing to the football up front. They're getting good surge with Neal and Short and Good and Kerrigan up front. Doing a good job of holding the point attack of attack for Purdue. Last year, Purdue did not allow an offensive touchdown in the Ohio State game, a game they lost 16 to 3. Pryor rolling out. Good pitch and catch. Devere Posey out of bounds at the 25. Rebecca Harlow, what do you have for us on the sidelines? Well, Wayne, we've seen Jason Warner. Back. Holding offense number 70. 10 yard penalty. Finger spot, second down. So the holding call on Bryant Browning, the right guard. Coaches told us yesterday this offensive line a work in progress. Yep, see it there. Well, particularly with the offensive line. That is indeed under construction. Three sophomores and two juniors in this line. Yeah, we see it right in the middle of your screen. There it is. Good number 70. Second down, Ohio State. The fake the same pressure on Pryor. He fumbles it. Kerrigan, the sack and the recovery. It's Purdue football. What a game. Ryan Kerrigan, the junior from Muncie, Indiana, is playing here today. Good pressure up front, and Kerrigan's holding the clinic on how to sack the quarterback and cause a strip. Two sacks last week at Minnesota. He's living in the Ohio State offensive backfield this week. Welcome back to Purdue, where Ohio State is struggling through this first half. Three turnovers by the Buckeyes, the latest right here. Well, Kerrigan just keeps fighting, and what I like is he's not content with getting a sack. He's trying to get the ball out, and he does it effectively for the second time today. Prior coming off the field was very distraught with himself for putting that ball on the carpet, but that's just an outstanding play. High effort guy by Kerrigan. And creating a big turnover. This is the team. most surprising stat of the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Tell you. See what the Boilermakers try here. Well, not a lot of time to work. Ohio State a two deep safety shell. 
Elliott looking downfield. Oh, and a leaping grab made by Smith into Buckeye territory. Anderson Russell makes the stop, 46-yard line of Ohio State, 23-yard pass play. You want to work for your quarterback, that's exactly how you do it. Smith goes up, gets on his ladder for this one. Good job of pulling it in. Nice catch. First down, then they ignite this uh, quick offense. Elliott gets it away. Smith once again out of bounds. 38-yard line of Ohio State on a gain of almost eight yards. Down to eight seconds remaining. Can they get it into Carson Wiggs' field goal range at least? Again, Wiggs' long is 59. That's the longest field goal in the country this year. He's ready to go in and kick it. <laughs> the mascot over there taking a couple of reps. <laughs> He's all boilered up, you know. <laughs> Second down. Wide of the mark, intended for the tight end, Kyle Adams. Four seconds remaining. And here comes Carson Wiggs. He is kicking into what appears to be a slight wind out of the north. This would be a 55 yard field goal attempt. That's a big gust of wind going the other way. Out of the hold of Chris Stats. John Finch, the snapper. Here it is. Placement made. Kick to the upright. And it is good! Wow. Carson Wiggs drills it right down the boulevard. And at the end of the first half, the Boilermakers take the lead. Well, I tell you, I just held up a piece of paper in my hand. The wind gushed it out, going in the opposite direction of that kick. Talk about a lot of pop in his leg. Drills that one for Purdue. And Danny Hope loves it. <laughs> How about that? Well, it was an interesting tussle back and forth through this first half of play. Ohio State led most of the way. But uh, Purdue reaches halftime with a 9-7 lead over the Buckeyes on a 55-yard field goal by Carson Wiggs. To the studio, Dave Wett Brepson. Along with Chris Martin and Rebecca Harlow, Wayne Larrabee, Ross Age Stadium on a crisp, cool afternoon for Big Ten football. Purdue will get the ball to start the second half, leading by the score of 9-7. to seven. Jim Trestle's club trying to equal Michigan for the most consecutive road victories in conference play. And that little streak uh, hanging in the balance here as we begin the third quarter. Wind blows the uh, ball off the tee. Let's go uh, to Rebecca Harlow, who moments ago talked with head coach Jim Tressel of Ohio State. Got Jim Tressel, of course, a couple unusual turnovers for your club. How do you clean things up here in the second half? Uh, you know, you can't turn it over. Everyone knows that. Purdue had those problems a few games ago, and, and uh, we have to assume that if we turn it over, we're going to have problems. So we better not do it this half. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Now we're set to go. Aaron Petrie, so there's some wind on the floor of the stadium. What's interesting is that Carson Wiggs had that 55-yard field goal right into the wind and had plenty to spare. Al Tariq McBurse, true freshman. They've just taken the red shirt off him this week. And he gets it out across the 25-yard line. First and 10, 33-yard line for the Purdue Bottomakers. Who start the third quarter with a two-point lead. Elliott, a little safe pass to Halliburton, the fullback running downhill. Oh, what a play made by the cornerback, Jim D. Chekwa. Wow, he took out a full-grown fullback coming out of control downhill and just stood him up. Well, never leave your feet unless, unless you have to. Watch the fullback here. Where is he going to go? He tries to jump. <laughs> Wait a minute. He ain't going to jump over no, a cornerback. No. Uh -uh. <laughs> oh, my. However, nonetheless, about a seven-yard gain, second and three, just short of the Purdue 40. 
Bolden alongside the quarterback. Elliott, quick release, nice look. Valentine on the ball. Even when they don't fumble, they almost fumble, it seems like, but that's a first down. Let's check down to the sidelines, Rebecca Harlow. Rebecca? Wayne and Chris, I just checked in with Danny Hope, and I've got to tell you, he is very fired up about his football team. I asked him about adjustments, and he said, hey, you know what? We're going to stick to the game plan that we used in the first half. The most important thing is that our guys are playing with fire and passion that we haven't seen in a couple of weeks. It's something they want to build on now. I asked specifically, how do you turn those field goals into touchdowns, and he said, Said, hey, points are points, we'll take them, but we do need some execution on that offensive end here in the second half. No question, Rebecca. Good points made by Danny Hope. I will say this the Buckeyes usually bring out the best in their opponents, that's for sure. Bolden, well designed play. Close to a first down, gain of eight, down to the 44 yard line of Ohio State. Bolden has very good vision and feel. When he's going in there. Watch him. He's going to come up. He's going to press this thing to the left. Then he's going to cut it back to the right. We'll see it here. He just has a good understanding. Watch this cut. He sees it there. And watch the cut back. Nicely done. Good vision and patience by Bolden. Bolden had 22 yards on eight carries in the first half. Second down. Halliburton, the fullback, trying to plow forward and got a couple of yards. Hayward, first to the ball. Brian Roll, the middle linebacker, helped out. It's a gain of a yard or two, and it leaves a third down and short coming up for Purdue. Big Ten College Football is brought to you in high definition by Phillips HD, available at Target, Walmart, and Sam's Club. You know what's interesting about this Ohio State defense is that they are one of the most dominating in the Big Ten, but there's a lot of bend, a lot of give. They give up a lot of yards. You're right. And that equates the time, which means their offense is not on the field. They're very stingy, though, once you get into the inside the 20. Elliott drills Smith. First down to the 30-yard line. And the Boilermakers come out on an assertive drive here to open the third quarter. 13-yard gain to a first and 10. Ross Holman made the tackle. Big time catch over the middle by Smith. He takes a shot. Now watch how he hops up. I've always learned when receivers get off the ground quickly like that after a big hit, that means they feel it. But they don't want you to know they feel it. <laughs> So they pop right up. Spoken like a true defensive back that you were. <laughs> Boy, he's been active though. He's Hasn't he though? Today. Well, you could see why he has among the league leaders in receptions coming into today's game. Elliott again. Now has to make it happen on his own. And escapes out of bounds inside the 25. Near the 24-yard line of Ohio State gain of six. We have to go back to Ohio State's defense. The fact that they're on the field so much, they allow teams to put together methodical drives. One, it keeps the offense off the field, but it keeps Terrell Pryor from getting in any kind of rhythm as well. Credit Purdue for being able to sustain long drive. Eighth play coming up in this drive. Purdue had 47 offensive snaps to just 24 for Ohio State in the first half, to your point. Second down. Bolden nicely done breaks a tackle at the 20 swarmed under at the 15 yard line boy there is a fire in these Boilermakers another first down on a gain of eight good backs can make a series of moves in the hole watch Bolden here finding the crease waiting patiently for it hits it gets downhill runs with toughness Boy, that's a great point, Chris. The good ones can make more than one move. They've got more than one move uh, in the line. There's a look at the offensive plays. Remember, Purdue came in. Their opponents had run 50 more plays than they had this season. Elliott. Oh, leaping grab made. Touchdown. What a catch by Valentine. An absolute thing of beauty. Watch his back shoulder fade. Excellent throw by Elliott. Valentine goes up and gets it. Check, please. <laughs> Big score for Purdue. And that is a design back shoulder fade. 
Carson Wiggs point after is good only the fifth touchdown given up by Ohio State's defense in the last 21 quarters of play. Purdue adds to its lead 16 to 7 eight play 67 yard drive to start the second half. Carson Wiggs kicking it away. Ray Small from the 20. Look out. And Small is dragged down. First and 15. Pryor looking downfield. Going deep. Intercepted. Brandon King. To the 20, to the 25, he's to the 30. Sane brings him down across the 35 of the 40-yard line. And this is where Terrell Pryor's growth if it hasn't gone in reverse, it's certainly slow. His ability to throw the ball down the field, he's just throwing that up for grab. The ball had a lot of loft under it. It allowed the DB to look close, make a great play on it by King. Good awareness, but that's just giveaway by Pryor. And Deron Carter, the freshman, was the intended receiver. And Pryor very frustrated after that play. Fourth turnover for Ohio State. And here come the Watermakers, first and 10 at their 40. A little bubble screen here. Nice cut made by Valentine, and he's spilled to the 47-yard line. Combination of Brian Roll and Jermail Hines on the tackle for Ohio State, but a nice gain of seven yards. And you can just see in the demeanor and the posture of the offense of Purdue, they're feeling good about themselves. I mean, they've, they've been able to move the ball, doing exactly what they want to do against this defense. And you can tell to a man they're playing with a great deal of confidence. Well, they moved the ball for 211 yards in the first half. They had to feel good about the way they were able to sustain drives. I mean, Ohio State came in giving up about 270 yards a game offensively. Now the interception on an errant throw. And right there to pick it off, Devon Torrance. That's something the Boilermakers could ill afford to do. Give it right back to the Buckeyes. First interception of the day for Purdue. Well, you're going to see it right here. Pressure's going to come, and it's going to break a pipe here. Because look, he cuts the block. Nice job of closing. Bad throw with good pressure from Ohio State. Second interception, third turnover of the day for Purdue. And Ohio State right back at it. Had an open receiver, ball hung up, broken up incomplete. McLean, the safety came over to make a play on it. And now the uh, intended receiver on that play, Devere Posey, was motioning toward Terrell Pryor. And he's lucky he gets his back because McLean does a nice job showing his range and going up and getting the football. Posey actually does a pretty nice job of breaking it up. I think that little bump into McLean distracts him, but and then at the end of the play, Posey held his arms, hands open to Pryor, so, you know, like they weren't on the same page. Polaris, hardest working player, Ryan Kerrigan, who else? He brought his hard hat today. Second and 15. Pryor dumps it off. Posey across the 40 to the 44 yard line. It'll be third and about five coming up for the Buckeyes. Defense by Purdue, running, forcing it inside. Good defense knows where their help is. Purdue has been spilling it back inside, knowing that the traffic is coming from inside out. Third down. Pryor's pass picked off. Purdue football. Oh, what a break on the ball by Brandon King. And folks, spoken from a guy who played the position, 
you just won't see it any better than this play. After watch him drive on the ball, lays out the ball skills to make that catch. One on one coverage against a speed receiver. Outstanding play by King. Five turnovers for Ohio State. And what is that quarterback thinking on the bench right there now? You, you have to wonder how he is between the ears. Erratic, unsure, indecisive. Two interceptions in this third quarter alone. First down, Boilermakers. Can they make them pay? Or will this Ohio State defense stiffen up once again? Bolden on the first down carry for three yards to the 44 of Ohio State. Pryor made a lot of comments this week about how their offense was looking to explode. It was just a matter of time so they're going to break out and have big numbers. You know, we're kidding ourselves if we think the Purdue guys don't read that stuff. They do. And they are playing possessed and putting their ears back against them. Ohio State, five turnovers, three fumbles lost, and two interceptions. Just a pile driving move there to set up a third down and four. Ralph Bolden on the carry. Purdue has been able to manage just six points off those five Ohio State turnovers. That gives you an indication of what kind of defense Ohio State has. Yeah. It's a big third down for Purdue. And Elliott passing down. Five and a half to go in the third. Third and four at the 41 of Ohio State. Elliott, Smith, does he have it up? It'll depend on the spot of the ball. He does to the 36-yard line. Russell stung him back. These receivers are working. They are working for their quarterback, getting open, getting to the sticks. Good route content right here by Smith, pushing that one just enough to get the first down. Once again, the forward progress is what they called for the first down. Out of the eye, and first and ten, Halliburton gets the call, and he draws a trio of Buckeyes. Holman first, Thaddeus Gibson, and Brian Roll to follow. A pickup nonetheless of four yards, and that's been a good play here today, Chris, that belly dive by the fullback. Yeah, the belly play's been there, and you, you get the sense that they noticed that in film study all week. Purdue's a team, they, they pass to set up the run, and so far they've been pretty balanced. Ohio State, the seventh ranked team in the country, trailing 16 to 7. We're under four and a half minutes to go in the third. Second down and six. That's Smith in motion. Elliott takes it himself to the 30, to the 25, out of bounds, got a first down. 24 yard line of Ohio State. Well, these two. These two have gotten into these kinds of skirmishes in the past. 2004, the Boilermakers have the lead. And they continue with the turnover right there. And hang on for a 24-17 victory, November 13, 2004. Empty backfield here. Five wide once again. Bubble screen. Valentine to the 15, to the 10, to the 5, to the house. Touchdown! This place just exploded. And watch the bubble screen, but watch the moves at the end. Read the blocks, cut it up. Great job of running with the rock after the catch by Valentine. Carson Wiggs for the point after. And he's got it through the uprights. Ohio State has won 16 consecutive Big Ten Conference road games. They're trying to tie Michigan with a record 17, but they're down 23 to 7 with 3.35 to go in the third.
Jim Trestle's club up against it now trailing 23 to 7. Wayne screenplays work best when you have aggressive guys that love to get up the field quickly. Good job of Purdue of calling that at the right time. Valentine again. Good moves to find pay dirt. He certainly knew what to do when he got it. He's the guy they talked about could be their big play receiver. Smith is their leading receiver. But Valentine has that big play ability. Thomas mucks it. Across the 10, short of the 15. Fourth quarter will begin when we come back. Purdue 23, Ohio State 7. Big Ten football presented by the United States Marine Corps. Start of the fourth quarter. First and 10 for Ohio State. Brandon Sane alongside the quarterback prior in the shotgun. Small at the top of your screen. They've got a slot to the bottom and prior looking towards Small. Over the top to Small and he's got it. They beat McLean down the sidelines. McLean and Brandon King and the biggest pass play of the day for Ohio State 38 yards to a first down of the Purdue 42. And that was a beautiful strike by Pryor down the field. Cover two. You got to reroute this guy. King's holding him. Oh, double move. Nice by Small. Good range by McLean, but not good enough. That double move lost Brandon King. It sure did. Safety over the top, getting there, but getting there late. We're going to reveal it. And that's what Pryor has to do with consistency. Good delivery there. Seven penalties for Ohio State here today. None for Purdue. Small inside the 40, covered up near the 38-yard line. Small, a big play maker. He did it on special teams a week ago. A 96-yard return for a touchdown against Wisconsin. This is going to be some clock management for Pryor. Utilizing his weapons. Small's got good speed. Prior running option, and he calls his own number. To the 30, to the 25, 20 foot race down the sidelines. Prior reaching goal line, and they're going to rule him down inside the five. This is what he can bring to the table. And when he runs the football, sometimes it feels as though he has a gear that no other player has on the field. See that knee hit, touch the ground. Right knee goes down. Yeah. Left knee down, and he's down. It's a good call. 35-yard run. First down for the Buckeyes. First and goal to go at the Purdue three-yard line. Pryor again. Captured at the pass. Gain of a yard down to the two. The Boilermakers who've keyed on Pryor most of today. Short and Neal collaborate on the tackle. A couple of big defensive linemen. And those two guys have been stalwarts up front. You get a chance to look at Don Landholm sharpening his pencils over there. He knows that you got to keep Ohio State out of the end zone, trying to limit them to a field goal. Second down goal to go at the two. Prior to the air, overshot his tight end, Jake Ballard, at the back line of the end zone. Now Ballard's 6'6", so he's a hard guy to overshoot. When you have time, this ball is not even close. And, you know, it's not like he was trying to drop it in over coverage because, as you could see right there, Torrey Williams wasn't close. Yeah. That was a wide-open receiver. That's, that's pitch and catch. Just 9 of 18 this week last week he was five at 13. Third down goal to go at the two. Prior option not going to get there. Tried to cut it back Ryan Kerrigan and Chris Carlino cut him off. Fourth down what do you do here partner. Oh they got to go for it. I would go for it here. Purdue's defense though has stymied them up front and to a certain degree kind of taking the heart a little bit. And, and maybe that's the reason that Trestle's going for this field goal. It's fourth and a full two yards. And so they'll try the field goal off the toe of Aaron Petri. 24 yard field goal attempt. Aaron Petri, Big Ten leader in field goals and scoring. 
And he successfully has this one through the upright. So the Buckeyes get three, but still trail by 13. 11.50 to go in the fourth. Wayne Larrabee, Chris Martin, Rebecca Harlow, 11.50 to go in this ballgame. The seventh-ranked team in the country struggling at Purdue, trailing 23 to 10. Frustrating day for Terrell Pryor and company. Aaron Petri sent to kick it away. Still early going fourth quarter. Plenty of time in this one. Oh, sure. This kick is going to squib across the 20. Juggled for a moment. This is the freshman they activated today, Al Tariq McBurse. And he's got good field position for Joey Elliott in the offense of the Boilermakers out near the 45 yard line on a 29 yard return. The fake to Bolden. Elliott, plenty of time. Nice throw to Smith. Boy, he really looks for number eight. And he's got him at the Ohio State 40 yard line, first and 10, 15 yard gain. Let's. Playing a very disciplined brand of football by and large. Penalty story. Keith Smith came in, leading receiver with 42 receptions. Number eight today, 12 receptions, 125 yards. Smith in the slot, bottom of your screen. Elliott to Valentine. Valentine went out of bounds and came back in. I believe he made the catch out of play anyway. So they just ruled incomplete. So the official tossed his hat to indicate that. Valentine was clearly out of bounds. Yep. Second down and 15 for Purdue. Leading 23 to 10. Nearing 10 minutes to go in the game. Smith first down inside the 30 of Ohio State and are they ruling incomplete they are apparently his foot came down out of bounds the first foot down was out of bounds had to be Ooh, boy that's close The field is incomplete. And let's see. Boy, another good look by our crew. Man, oh man, that's as close as it gets. So third down and 15. Still 10:36 to go for the game. Purdue leading by 13 at the Ohio State 45. Elliott. Just a three man rush and he takes off. Not going to get the first down. Out of bounds near the 32 yard line. He had Coleman and Roll coming up on him, and you too would steer out of bounds if those two were coming at you. <laughs> well, you're right about that. And that's, just, that's just smart. Yeah, I'd say so. That's self preservation. <laughs> so you don't get the first down, but you live to uh, maybe go for it on fourth. Sometimes you got to do that. <laughs> Well, I don't think he's going to go for it on fourth. They're going to bring on Carson Wiggs, and why not? Wiggs with the three field goals today, 32, 27, 55 yards. And this one will be about a 49-yard field goal attempt. Off the right hash with the wind to his back. He missed a field goal of 55 yards in this direction. A kick to the uprights. And it is good! Carson Wiggs. Fourth field goal of the day puts Purdue on top 26 10 with 10 minutes to go. Purdue's latest scoring drive 23 yards, five plays, 49 yard field goal by Carson Wiggs, his fourth field goal of the game. And the Boilermakers have the lead now by 16, 10 minutes to go. Carson Wiggs set to boot it away. Seventh ranked team in the nation, the Buckeyes on the ropes. Can they respond? Here's the kickoff. Small, across the 20, tripped up short of the 30-yard line. 
the stage of the game Iowa did defeat Wisconsin after spotting the Badgers 10 points beat them in Madison. I'll tell you something the Iowa Hawkeyes might be the toughest team in this conference bar none. First and 10. Prior, nice pinpoint pass. Devier Posey, roped down by Chris Carlino, the middle linebacker, and a gain of seven yards. Let's check in with our sideline reporter, Rebecca Harlow. Rebecca? Well, guys, I have Travis Doerr. She knows exactly what it's like to be Carson Wiggs. Of course, he's had a huge game today. You're back at Purdue getting your PhD. One of your studies is in field goals. What have you learned? Yeah, well, we've learned some interesting things. You know, field goal kickers, maybe more than any other position, they're an intuitive bunch. You know, they think about the wind, they think about their surroundings, the 11 guys in front of them trying to block the kick. So we wanted to take a look at what's actually going through a kicker's mind and what do they feel when they experience success or failure. And you know, Ohio State, of course, comes into the house. You know you want to beat this team today. Are you proud of what your team is getting done here? Well, absolutely. And Carson especially is having a big game and showing that the special teams can really contribute to a pretty victory. It's not over yet. The Buckeyes are a great team, but they're playing well. Uh, so we'll continue to watch you. Thank you. Bet. Terrell Pryor and Posey coming back for it. Pender with a sure tackle, gain of about four. And it's interesting what they were talking about down there in the sidelines. Jan Stenerud used to tell me the great Hall of Fame kicker of the Kansas City Chiefs said the first thing he did every day when he got up was check the weather. He'd look outside, check the weather, especially the wind. <laughs> Most kickers are worried about weather forecasts. Yeah, That's the first thing. And intuitive. I think so. Second down. Pryor takes it himself. Slips one defender. Not only is he big, but he's very elusive. And he picks up about five and leaves a third down and one coming up. Well, he's bigger than the DNs just about for Purdue. And he's hard to get on the ground. You have to bring your feet when you tackle him because if you don't, he's going to run right through. Third down, a yard to go. One of nine on third downs are the Buckeyes. From the midfield marker, Pryor able to pick it up. Thank you, Dave. Wanted to see how that thing wound up. We we knew the Hawkeyes had won, but we didn't see how it finished. And this one far from finished. Carter down to the 25-yard line. Deron Carter. The much ballyhooed recruit out of St. Thomas Aquinas High School in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. That's Chris Carter's son, former Ohio State standout NFL Pro Bowler. Well, he does a nice job of sitting down this little dig right route, excuse me, right in front of the safety. 24-yard gain. Ohio State first and 10 of the Purdue 25. Pass a little bit wide of the mark. Posey unable to come back for it. Second and 10. Four yard run by Terrell Pryor pushed him over a thousand, so he joins that club of Buckeyes led by Cornelius Green. Second down. Empty backfield, five receivers set. Good protection. Pass thrown just a bit behind Sansenbacher. And with a lot of mustard on it, Sansenbacher unable to haul it in. When was the last time uh, Terrell Pryor's jersey was this dirty? Well, I would guess the USC game, which also happened to be the last time this team trailed in the fourth quarter. So this is a bit of uncharted territory for that guy. And can he put the ball in the end zone? Will be the true test. Third down and ten. Pryor on his own now. Sansenbacher coming back for it and a reception made. There's a penalty marker down, but the catch made in front of Sansenbacher by Devere Posey for the touchdown pending the outcome of the flag. And I'll tell you right now, the the infraction was pass interference on the defense. This one's gonna stand. Pass interference, defense, penalties decline. Play results touchdown. And that's a 25-yard touchdown play. You talk about coming out of the playbook. Holy man. Yeah, this is this is back in Jeanette, Pennsylvania when he worked on this play. This is from the schoolyard, rolls out right, throws it up, and there's the penalty. 
<laughs> Tell you what, I thought that pass was going to reach Sansenbacher, and Devere Posey didn't let it. <laughs> it was it was aimed for Sansenbacher. <laughs> now Ohio State going for two, down 26 to 16. Blitz coming from Purdue. Pryor on the rollout. Pryor's got two points. 26 to 18. So they get it down to a one possession game with still 7.14 to go. Well done. Terrell Fryer comes out of the playbook for a 25 yard touchdown pass and then converts for two. The Buckeyes are back in it. Well, we're at that time of year. The bewitching hour is upon us, Mr. Martin. Spooky. Be interesting to see what you wear for Halloween. <laughs> Short kickoff at the 10, bobbled for a moment, picked up by the freshman. And he's short of the 20-yard line. Now, it'll be very interesting, Chris, to see how the Boilermakers handle this now with their lead down to eight. They need a sustained drive, obviously. The time of possession becomes very important now. Quick look, Lindsay, the tight end, first down. Good start to this drive out to the 30-yard line up for due gain of 11. Ryan Roll made the stop. I'll tell you what, the only thing more important or as important as football is what you're eating while you're watching it. Some people think that's more important than football. The Big Ten Cookout presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Get must-have recipes and tips today, 5.30 Eastern on the Big Ten Network. Get you set, get you uh, well-fed for that game coming up tonight in primetime from Indiana. Indiana. And Illinois tonight on the Big Ten Network in primetime. It's going to be a good matchup. Bolden. Boy, he started to the left, looked at the middle, and then was swarmed under. Holman was there, along with Williams, the defensive lineman. They cut him off. And a loss of a yard. Second down and 11. Ohio State said it earlier coming into this game had 10 interceptions. They're very opportunistic. Meanwhile, Purdue came into the game second in the nation in most turnovers. And uh, that would be the worst thing that could happen to them right now. Second and 11. Press coverage on the corners. Elliott. Incomplete. Put it in the only place where his man could make a play on it, Smith, and that pass a little bit too low. So it becomes a third and 11 for Purdue. But you can tell he's thinking on his feet. You put that ball low and away. Yep. I mean, maybe your receiver can make a play on it, but if he doesn't, no one else does. Yep. Well, third down here. They're 7 of 15 on third downs, are the Boilermakers. They come with their share of screens today. Two receivers top of your screen, one to the bottom, tight end at the bottom of your screen as well. Elliott under immediate pressure, and down he goes. Well, they brought the safety, Kurt Coleman, and Elliott could not juke him. And a loss of yardage back inside the 25-yard line. He got the sense that Ohio State had to bring the heat at some point. Good job of Coleman corralling inside. He's an impressive safety, isn't he? Yeah. Kurt Coleman. He has tremendous range. But he's great in all facets of the game. Chris Summers in punt formation. Small chasing it. It backs up, taking a Ohio State bounce and is down by the Boilermakers. 39-yard line of Ohio State. Just a 36-yard punt. First and 10 for Pryor. Down eight. And he starts by throwing a strike to number eight, the Beer Posey, who's brought down just short of the first down gain of nine. Carlino on the tackle. In the conference today, Iowa wins after spotting Wisconsin a 10-0 lead. Michigan State has the advantage over Northwestern. A lot of snow at Penn State as they get set for that game later this afternoon. Will that make it a whiteout at Penn State? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the handoff and straight up the middle. Sane is close to the first down. Oh, you, you don't get the feeling, you know, Ohio State has had it. Anything consistent going offensively. Their ground game is only in spurts. Their passing game has been hit or miss. The turnovers, you, you don't get the feeling Ohio State has anything they can 
really go to except maybe Terrell Pryor the creativity of Pryor and he's looked like he's just going to quarterback sneak this and he does did he get it when you're six six and almost 240 <laughs> that's quite an obvious call and there's no doubt Purdue was expecting it but Mike Neal and company at the bottom of the pile Juan short were powerless to stop it it's first down just short of the midfield marker. Juggled and dropped incomplete. Pass thrown behind Devere Posey. He almost was able to make a play on it, and that one very nearly could have been intercepted as well. Catch it. I thought it was a catchable ball. Not exactly where he wants it out in front. But he has to be able to adjust and make this catch. Yeah, he, he should have pulled that in. Hmm. Second and ten. Eight point lead for Dew. We're under four minutes to go for the game. Seventh ranked Ohio State. Pryor takes off. And a nice tackle made by Jason Werner. Tripped him up just inside the 50 of the 46 yard line of Purdue. And it's third down Ohio State. This is a really good play by Werner because he comes in for the blitz, but he's able to disengage right there. Disengage with the offensive lineman to make the tackle on Pryor. Werner missed two tackles on Ohio State's first scoring drive of the day, but he's been sound ever since. Pryor, nice look. Devere Posey, first down Buckeyes at the 34-yard line of Purdue. We welcome those of you joining us from Michigan, Delaware State. It has been the Aaron Valentine Show in this second half. Two touchdown receptions for Valentine. And a field goal by Carson Wiggs, who has four field goals here today. Terrell Pryor made some magic here. And Devere Posey, and then the Pryor took it over on a two-point conversion. Small erased immediately. Good short tackle made by Torrey Williams. But a pickup to the 29-yard line of five yards. Second and five coming up for the Buckeyes. Inside of three minutes to go here. Ohio State trying to win its 17th consecutive Big Ten Conference road game. That would equal Michigan for the longest streak of all time. Pryor under a blitz. Got it away just in time, and Bender broke it up from Posey. Third down, Ohio State, third and five. Boy, that was a great blitz call. Watch the blitz come from the left side of your screen. Comes late. Fire has to get rid of it. Feels that he gets rid of the ball. That was Evans that came late off the edge. Ohio State is four for four on their last four third down conversions. Fire has been decisive in this drive. Third and five. The sophomore alone in the shotgun. Under pressure. And he's set. outside the 35 yard line from the 38 it'll be fourth down Ohio State Buckeyes take a timeout this defense has been working all day they are putting it in in that front four just the surge the low pad level they've been disruptive all day long and given high effort for Purdue. Keon Brown and Mike Neal would not be denied. The football is at the Purdue 38 yard line. 2.24 to go for the game. Purdue leading by eight. I would say Trestle was speaking to his O line to give time to Pryor on this play. But they've got to have it out of that offensive line, no doubt. Fourth down. Ball game hanging in the balance. Pryor chased. Lofts it. And it's knocked down incomplete. Purdue takes over with 2.16 to go in the game. It looked like he was trying to get that to small. 
but closest to the football was David Pender, and he knocked it down. In a word, this Purdue defense has been relentless in every layer. Up front, their linebackers, that secondary has played lights out. See that play by Pender, but collectively, this has been a relentless performance by Purdue. Ohio State has two timeouts remaining. 2.16 left to go in the game. First and ten, Bartomakers. First and ten, Purdue. Bolden, the tail of the tandem in the eye. Bolden skipping to the outside and wrapped up quickly. First to the football, Jermail Hines. And Purdue coming in here, one and five, having lost five in a row. And the coaches kept telling us. I mean, we kept going through the lineup, and they said, this guy's getting better, this guy's getting better. You know, and it just didn't reflect it in the the record and uh, they felt they all felt to a man that hey we're a lot better football team than one and five and you know what they've held on to the football somewhat today they have forced turnovers by Ohio State and you can see that if they don't commit the turnover mistakes Purdue can hang with people and if There's they no doubt about on that. here what validation it would be for their team to the outside world second down <laughs> Elliot Slides to a stop at the 39. Third and nine. Seven of 16 on third down conversions. For the Boilermakers, Joey Elliott and company. From the Purdue 39. They empty the shotgun. Bolden in motion. Elliott, little bubble screen. And a penalty marker down. A face mask coming up on Doug Worthington, who makes the tackle. Oh my. Personal foul, face mask. Number 84, 15 yards, snapped onto the end. Automatic, first down. Worthington does a nice job of sniffing out this play, but clearly we get a shot of it there. Face mask to allow Purdue to move the chains. The ninth penalty against the Buckeyes may have cost them in the end. 26-18 for Due. Ohio State out of timeouts. And the Boilermakers first and 10. Victory formation for Purdue. They can run it down. How about this? First conference loss of the season for Ohio State. Second loss overall. And folks, the Boilermakers, this was no fluke. They worked it every step of the way. And we should emphatically state that Ohio State didn't lose this game. Purdue went out and won it. They took the fight to Ohio State on offense, on defense, and in the special teams game. After a season opening win over Toledo, five straight losses. The last time Purdue defeated the seventh ranked team in the country, October 29th, 1949, when they defeated Minnesota 13 to 7. Joey Elliott, what a job he did. Masterful. The turnovers they forced on Ohio State were forced turnovers. Yep. And then for the most part. Yep. Kerrigan, Neal, those safeties flying around. Brandon King, Big Day Pender, Williams, McLean. And, you know, we talked to Danny Hope, and he said, you know, this is a team that I love. They give me great effort. They pour everything in. But there's been a series of plays, almost an enigma, of why they lost. I believe him. They storm the field in West Lafayette. The last time Purdue defeated a nationally ranked team was 2003 when it beat number 10 Iowa 27 to 14 here in West Lafayette. 
And here today, they boil her up and knock off the seventh ranked team in the nation, the Ohio State Buckeyes, 26 to 18. What a picture that is. That is everything that's good about college football. The Boilermakers have snapped a 19 game winless streak against top 25 teams here today. You look down the road from here. Ohio State is Minnesota at home coming up. And next week Purdue plays host to Illinois. Well, that'll do it from West Lafayette. The final score, Purdue 26, Ohio State 18. Now for Chris Martin and Rebecca Harlow, I'm Wayne Larrabee. Let's send you to the State Farm wrap-up and Dave Redson back in our Chicago studios.